Hi, this is Sean from One With Nature. Just off the coast of Cancun, Mexico, is a fascinating island, Isla Mujeres. Here is a pic of the north end of the island. This is where all the action is. The south end is a little more quiet. All through this island you will find interesting botanicals. Some are decorative. Some are unusual. Most are pretty to look at. And some are just outright painful. Almond trees appear to grow right out of the tops of the shops on Hidalgo Street, as do the large sea grape trees. This one is also on Hidalgo Street. We'll talk about the sea grape tree in a few minutes. But first, a sublime video with appeal. So we're going to talk about these little gifts from nature. These are limes. There are two basic types of limes. There's the sweet lime and then there's the tart lime. These are tart limes. And everything I'm about to say is based on the tart lime with its citric acid, its high citric acid. Nothing I'm about to say will work nearly as well with, if at all, with the sweet lime. So here on the island, you'll see a lot of people walking around with lime wedges sticking out of their beer bottles, or they'll serve a lime with, uh, different beverages that are alcoholic in nature. Not only does it enhance the taste of that alcoholic beverage, but the lime actually kills what we call bad bacteria. They're bad to us. Both good bacteria and bad bacteria, quote, we need them because life is about balance. But when we have too much bad bacteria is when we start having problems in our body and the juice of the lime will cut down on the effectiveness the ability of the quote bad bacteria to cause us distress or harm us most bad bacteria can only exist in an alkaline state they can't exist in an acid state very well at all. I'll give the example of the H. pylori. The H. pylori bacteria that causes stomach acids, or excuse me, causes stomach ulcers, secretes ammonia, which is highly alkaline. And this bacteria, the H. pylori, uses this alkalinity uh, shield around itself to keep from being damaged by the stomach acids. And we can use the same principle by using the lime. The lime will go in, even if you have a case of food poisoning, the lime juice can go in and it'll actually start killing those bad bacteria in the food that you ate. What works even better would be to drink a fermented drink like kombucha. Then you're gonna have the good bacteria kicking out the bad bacteria en masse. But the lime juice will do the same thing, and it's cheaper. It's not as good as oregano. Oregano, by far, is better. But there's, there's two types of herbs that you can use for stuff like this. It's what I call the sledgehammer herbs and the lockpick herbs. The sledgehammer herbs will go in, get the job done. The lockpick herbs are more subtle and they're more kind to the body. An example of a sledgehammer herb would be graviola. Graviola is a great antibacterial, but graviola will also take out the, bad, the good beneficial bacteria in your GI tract, and then you have to repopulate. The lime, on the other hand, you don't have to worry about it taking out huge amounts of your good bacteria that you spent a lot of time building up over your life. I'll give the example of if you have a house and your front door is locked, you've lost the key, you can't get in, well you can use a sledgehammer, that'll open the door, right? But it'll also damage your front door, you're going to have to replace it or repair it. A lock pick, you get a guy that can pick the lock, goes in, opens the lock, maybe he scratches the outside of that doorknob, but the door opens and there's no damage to it. Well, 
that front door is your body. And depending on what herb you use, you can use some really hostile herbs like Oregon grape root or golden seal, which will go through the body and also wipe out good bacteria. We don't want that. We don't, we don't need to use those. There are other alternatives. So I remember reading a book online. It was on Google Books. I'll put it in the item description below. It was from 1811. And the author was talking about using limes to help people with opiate addiction. Now this book was printed in 1811 and it wasn't until 1812 that morphine came on the scene and it was named after Morpheus, the guy from the Matrix movies. No, it wasn't. It was named after the Greek god of dreaming. So in 1811, before morphine really came on the scene strong, they were talking about using lemon juice to help people overcome addictions to opiates. You would take large amounts of lime juice and it would counteract the effects in this author's opinion. So, very inexpensive, very easy to obtain, antibacterial. Again, most bad bacteria thrive in an alkaline environment, not an acid environment. A lot of people try and change the pH of their tissues or their blood. They want to alkalinize their body, but you can't. You cannot change the pH of the blood or the pH of the tissues without seriously hurting your body's ability to keep you healthy. Because if you're chugging large amounts of alkaline water into your stomach, you're going to weaken your stomach acid and it's going to make you more prone to the effects of bad bacteria. That's the firewall of our body. Our stomach acid goes to work and wipes out these invaders and then the good bacteria in the rest of the GI tract takes care of what that missed, what the stomach acid missed. So just a little tip for you. The common lime, easily available, very popular here. We're down in Mexico. We're on an island off the coast of Mexico, but very popular down here. It's everywhere. And when I go into the restaurants here and I'm about to eat a meal, I ask the waiter, I say, could you please bring a little bowl of limes? And he does, and we all sit there and we squeeze the lime into our water or onto our food. There was a study done in Africa where people were using uh, lime juice to defeat cholera. And in the rainy season, you're going to see a lot more cholera. A lot more people get sick during the rainy season from cholera because it thrives in that environment. And this study showed that when people would take lemon or lime and they would squeeze it onto their meal and then eat the meal, they were less prone to becoming sick from cholera. Again, it's because of the citric acid in the lime that destroys these bad bacteria, the bacteria you do not want in your body in huge amounts. So, just a couple tips there. We're talking about this little lime right here that does so much, another gift from nature. You've probably heard that acids are bad and alkalinity is good, and that acids lead to premature aging and death. You may have even been told that disease cannot live in an alkaline environment. I'm sorry to tell you that nothing could be further from the truth. Most pathogenic bacteria prefer an alkaline environment. The citric acid in limes can provide intestinal relief, protecting you against pathogenic bacteria in the stomach and GI tract when nothing else is available. This is a leaf from the sea grape tree. The sea grape tree grows all over the place down here. You can't go anywhere without finding this thing. There's trees and bushes. And this is actually a smaller leaf. It's called platter leaf. 
in other areas of the world because the leaves are huge, big enough to serve a meal on a platter. And this is an astringent, and it's used as an astringent to help people with, let's say, dysentery, all right, where they can't stop losing fluids because of a bacterial infection. So, other famous astringents would be white oak bark, red raspberry, schizanderberry is an astringent. And it's used the leaf, the grapes. Uh, I mentioned a book that was printed in 1811 that talks about the sea grape. And the grapes that grow off of it, at that time the book was printed, were considered so astringent that they said not to eat the grapes, don't eat them, because it will have an astringing effect on the body for up to three weeks. But I've known people that have eaten a jam made out of the sea grape. I know people that have eaten a lot of sea grapes right off of the tree or the bush, and they weren't affected in any way. I talked about the sea grape in my uh, libido herbs video where the guy got all mad at me because I wanted to run across the street and take a picture of the sea grape tree, but he got into the spirit eventually. But the sea grape tree grows uh, here in Mexico. I've got footage from a previous visit to Mexico where the sea grape bush just goes on and on and on forever. And it grows here, Jamaica, uh, in the Philippines, it's really big. In the Philippines, they take the bark. They take the bark and they use it in water. They'll boil it in water and then they'll simmer it down. And then they'll add alcohol and they'll drink it for ulcers. It helps with ulcers. So ulcers, but dysentery especially. You can go online, you can find all kinds of different uses for the sea grape. The leaf, the bark, the root, and the grape itself. But the chief interest that I have in this plant and tree is because of its use for dysentery. And dysentery kills a lot of people every year. And the sea grape can actually counteract the effects of the dysentery. It can astringe or tighten the tissues. Red raspberry is used for diarrhea, for stopping diarrhea. And there's a point where the diarrhea just isn't useful anymore. It does serve a purpose in expelling what the body senses it doesn't want, but a person can also die from losing fluids through diarrhea or dysentery. This will counteract that. For this reason, I consider the sea grape to be a life-saving gift from nature. The sea grape tree grows like crazy in Cancun. You will often see people waiting at bus stops and they stand under these large sea grape trees because the trees have these abundant thick leaves and they're seeking shelter from the intense Mexican sun. The sea grape has some antibacterial and antifungal properties. It's an astringent. Around the world it is used as, in no particular order, for hemorrhages, venereal disease, rashes, asthma. Wounds are washed with it. It is used in menopause. It's used for anemia, ulcers, and then diarrhea and dysentery, another botanical that provides abundant intestinal relief.